Hello to Paul Keller. Hey, I'm I'm just clicking off some things. Got it. There's Mel. Oh, I love you, buddy. I love you too. Listen, we're live now on Facebook. Okay. All right. I'll keep my mouth shut and just enjoy being with you. No, no, no. This is going to be an interview. We're we're going to change the uh, format uh, today. And maybe we will change the format going forward. Oh, um, elaborate, so, please. Well, for, first of all, let's talk about you. Paul Keller, you're a world famous uh, <clears throat> bass player, double bass or contrabass, as they say. Um, you've appeared with the, the greatest uh, jazz musicians in the world, and you are one yourself. Um, and I was lucky enough to meet you here in Israel. And... Um, even to play with you a bit. I know that doesn't sound so good. Uh, play music together. Um, and you've done something incredibly kind uh, with your band and with Sarah. Is, is she coming on the program? I haven't spoken with her today. I sure hope she is. I texted her and uh, hope, hoping she's going to join. She's amazing, isn't she? Yeah. So, but uh, tell us about this... Uh, Wonderful gesture of friendship and love. First of all, it's 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 me who was lucky to meet you. I'm glad it's symbiotic, but I feel so connected to you, Mel. And the time that I uh, visited there twice to Tel Aviv, once with uh, Eddie Higgins and once with our dear departed young jazz musician, piano phenomenon, Steve Richko. But both times, you and I just made a connection, didn't we? Absolutely. And it it it's powerful how we are personally connected, emotionally, uh, friendship, all the way across the world like this. And uh, so sorry for what Israel is going through right now. And and the entire Middle East, the entire world, this is this is so not cool, and it's it's so not how ninety nine point nine percent of the world is. There's um, more love out there than there is hate. We're more so alike. We're, than, yeah, yeah. We're gonna, All right, we're going to share. We're going to share some love in a minute because uh, I felt when I met you that I was like the luckiest person alive to. Uh, to meet somebody like you. And um, so tell us, let, let's start with this great day gift. You've created the music for, for the show. The Daily Mail now has a five minute jingle. It's more than a jingle. It's a, <laughs> it's a whole, it's a whole epic. It's a rhapsody. So tell, yeah. tell us what happened. Well, just my love and, and uh, my love for you inspired, um, inspired this song especially when you change the name of your facebook show to the daily mail uh oftentimes when i'm writing songs for the people i love and that's mostly the songs that i write they're about people i love uh uh if i can come up with the title the rest of it just flows comes right out i don't know why that is uh but we got the daily mail as the title and the rest of it just it was just like we turned on a faucet and the music just came right out and i you know it's it's written with love and from the heart uh to honor you and all that you do um i'm mostly a music guy i play the string bass i like to compose songs on the piano and i like to play them with my group number 4 or 5 or 6 down the list is i like to write the lyrics and that, and I find that very difficult to write meaningful lyrics that are not silly. Um, once again, it it just came pouring out. The words just came pouring out because of my affection for you. Um, so that's a little bit of the backstory. Oh yeah, and then only last week, only last Saturday, did we go back go into the studio with the five of us, me, Sarah D'Angelo, who is just, I already said it, she's the best. 
and I wish she was here right now. Uh, our my like my, my lifelong buddy Carrie Kocher on the vibraphone. Uh, and Adam Mosley on the piano and Ralph Tope, both of who are tremendous blessings in my life. I work with, with this five group, five person quintet a lot around Detroit. And uh, so we went in the studio and we recorded that song and it was, we recorded it and it was over in four minutes. I wanted to just do it over and over and over and over again. So now we have the beautiful song to listen to and love and remind us of you and open your show maybe we need to go back in mel and just do a 60 second version of it well we, we can um I, I i can give it to somebody to like fade out after 60 seconds or something okay but, um whatever whatever um the um the long version is spectacular i can't use that to open every show but i can use it once in a while and, of um, course not. and maybe maybe as some background music um yeah. you know what actually mel i had bigger thoughts bigger dreams in my head than just i mean it was a love gift to you but beyond that <laughs> beyond that i hope to in include it in some kind of package you know come some kind of cd package that's a whole program of songs that i've written or maybe just songs that i've collected you know, we make CDs and we put them out there. And I, and so that's my bigger, my, my long range goal for this. And that's why we included all the, the jazz solos. Wonderful. And uh, still, you know what, my, it's only five minutes long though, still, right? Yeah. For, for jazz, it's a short one now. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, Paul. So, so uh, I'll tell you what my dream is, uh, which is to come in the straight in the spring and, uh, and sing with you guys. Oh, I would love it. Do you remember what we sang and you danced with Annie Selleck on the stage? Absolutely. Was that was that you say potato and I say potato? Yeah. And then you uh, you told that uh, that joke, which we're yes. not going to repeat today. We've we've already beaten that one to death. Uh, but Paul, be be before we hear this music, and you're going to thank Sarah and the band for me because it's such a wonderful gesture. Um, the, the, the show started with my diatribe against the world. And, and this morphed into, um, a different kind of thing, because when I, when I think about it, um, the, 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 the people who hate Jews, anti-Semites, um, they've been brought up to hate Jews. I, I met them when I was a kid in Ottawa. I grew up with them. Uh, they have this vile, unbased hatred, including my my next door neighbors. And you are a person who loves Jews and you love Israel. Um, run me through that. And, and also, I should say that you're a very Christian person. Uh, your father was a pastor, right? Um, you have he a was strong a minister. Yeah, and you have a strong belief. Uh, but you 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 are a Christian who loves Jews. I, I want to hear more about this. I love people. You know, I love good people. I love people that try to uh, help other people. I love people that do nice things to other people. I, I love people that don't hurt other people. I love people that are tolerant of other people's views and beliefs and religion and music. <laughs> music but, too right yeah so going, well, going that, forward, that, that can be a hot topic as well so going forward i want to talk about um what i call my favorite jews but it doesn't have to be my favorite jews um i want to bring other people on the program to talk about the jews who, who wrote the jazz songs um you know like for you to come on sometime or other members of the band and talk about Jewish people who created jazz standards that you love, for example, could be Harry Arlen, Gus Kahn. It doesn't matter. There's there's many of them. We just did Gus Kahn. It was his birthday uh, last last Tuesday. We just did a Gus Kahn thing before that. Oh, you know, every week it's another Jewish composer that we're saluting because it's their birthday. Really? 
Oh, we do it all the time with I love this Tuesday night Dixieland uh, uh band. It's Dixieland and Beyond and you know Gus Kahn and and that and those people in Irving Berlin. Oh my gosh, those tunes are just right straight good for Dixieland jazz. Um uh, Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean that's where I take 80 per fully 80% of my performing material from Jewish have composers. There been, have there been Jewish musicians, singers that you've worked with? Uh, I should I should uh, shout out to Nitzan Kramer uh, who, who, who wonderfully introduced us. And um, Yes, Nitzan is the reason that we're together. And is there anybody else that you want to mention that we should talk about, bring on the show, anybody? You know who I have enjoyed following ever since I met her in Israel is Maya Head, the mm -hmm. photographer. Yeah. Is her last name H E D? Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to say hello, Maya. I I enjoyed meeting you and I enjoy your work. And I'm glad I'm your Facebook friend. She's a great photographer. So um, so what do you say, Paul? Do you have anything else to say before we play this uh, opus of yours? Which I, I must say, since uh, there's another person I have to shout out to, Paul, and that is, uh, is Jeff. Um, Jeff Pulver is uh, the guy who invented the name The Daily Mail. Oh, Jeff. Yeah, Wonderful. so without Jeff, yeah, without Jeff, we wouldn't have The Daily Mail. We wouldn't have your song. Um, do you, should we give a listen to it? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Hey, you know, I would like to say this, that the songs that I that I write, you mentioned my father. Yeah. Uh, I have great respect. Both my mom and dad have passed away now. They were wonderful people. They made a, a, a lot of who I am <laughs> uh, came from them. And my music, even though they were not jazz musicians, they were musically inclined. And because of my love and respect for them, all of my jazz music and everything I present to the world has to go through this prism of my mom and dad. And they're not even here to judge it anymore. Or not to judge it, but I always figure if it sounds good to them, it's prob I'm probably on the right track. And they also liked music with good melody, but something fun and interesting going on in there too. So they taught me that. Uh, uh, the other thing I would like to say is that my jazz tunes are kind of like the song form invented by the Jewish composers. Uh, popular songs of the 20s and, well, the teens and the 20s. Irving Berlin, they invented this song form of A, A, B, A, a bridge, or the first half or the second half. And so I didn't make this up when I composed this song. I'm just building on the on the backs of my mom and dad and all, all the right. great Jewish composers and then all the jazz musicians that I love too. So yeah. this didn't just come right out of here. Okay, but if you're if you're giving credit to Irving Berlin, we also have to give credit to Jerome Kern. Ooh, but of course, but of course, a pioneer of the AABA, um, and. Um, we can talk about that. We can talk about that a lot. And uh, we should. I didn't want to get too technical, but I did want to say that when, as we listen to this song that I composed, eh, I just organized the stuff based on. No, no, no. no. It, it, but it, there is like there is a Eastern European a uh, lilt to it that I love. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I tried to make it sound okay in my in my uh, uh, here. I live out in the country in in Michigan. Uh, and I'm uh, I'm not where you are. I don't know who you are. All I can do is my perspective. And I wanted to make it sound Jewish Mel. That's all I was trying to do. And also go through the prism of my mom and dad. Of course, my own experiences. And this is and then I wrote the words. So and that was all all influenced. It, so, it, it so, wouldn't come uh, pouring yeah. out if you didn't have those influences. Well, thank you. That's that's so kind. So um, my mom's birthday was yesterday. Uh, she would have been uh, 95. She's not with us. Um, and uh, and my dad's birthday in, in two days. 
And uh, they, uh, even when they were old, they would still come to my jazz shows um, and uh, stay for as long as they could. And, and um, of course, the songs that we sing are the songs that uh, they grew up on. And, um, and I'll just tell you um, that I think that my introduction to jazz was listening to Rhapsody in Blue at a concert when I was 10 years old. And um, that imprinted me for life. That they're, they're, we're talking now about the Gershwins. Uh, we could go on and on. Uh, you can go Paul, on and on, yeah. Yeah. So you but, say but those song... people, yeah, those people yeah. influenced who we are. I mean, George Gershwin, Jerome Kern, Irving Berlin, they influenced who I am. And that's a hundred years ago, right? That music yeah, is a hundred years ago. Well, in, in on February 14th, on Valentine's Day, we are going to um, share love. Um, and the and it's also Abraham Lincoln's birthday. And we're going to share love with people who love. And um, that's my plan. And, and, and February the 14th was also, it'll be 100 years since the first playing of Rhapsody in Blue in New York. Woo! All right. 100 years. Fantastic. What a great music. Anyway, there's some, there's some of that in in this tune. So, Paul, you say that it's me, but I say that it's you. This is a uh, this is pure Paul and uh, Paul Keller. I am eternally grateful to you, and um, I, this is such a great gift, um, and I will treasure it always. Um, I think we've talked about it enough. Let's hear it. It better be good now. Yeah, it's going to be good. Are you ready? I am ready. Tell me if you can hear it.
Incredible. Incredible. Now, how do I get rid of the share? I've lost all the buttons here. Paul, are you with me? I'm with you. Okay, stop sharing. Here we are. Wow, wow. Mel, you're good. I didn't do anything. You wrote it. You sang it. You played it. Uh, thank you, Mel. It's it's uh, my joy, my honor, my pleasure. Um, it's to to give this to to write something special for you. Um, and you know that when you give something like that to somebody else as love and it's accepted like that, it's, it's almost more for yourself than it is for you. It's almost more for me than it is for you, Mel, the joy that I get in sharing it for you and giving you something special and having you bounce it back to me. Thank you for that gift. So I love you. Oh, I, Mom, you, 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 you've opened my heart. Like, um, so, um, but now I have an idea. Okay. <clears throat> because what's happened was, you know, okay. So up until now, the daily mail was Mel gets on with his phone, you know, and launches a tirade against the people who, who don't understand the situation here. Uh, people who think that Hamas are not, who are nice guys. People think the Jews should be exterminated. And um, and then over the course of the past month, it's morphed into, um, instead of ranting against anti-Semitism, we we'll find good things to say about Judaism, the Jewish people, um, and Christianity, which for me is like so close to Judaism. Yeah. Um, and so I'm going to, you just gave me an idea. Um, why don't we, like one day a week of the Daily Mail will be dedicated to, to Paul Keller talking <laughs> about one of our Jewish jazz heroes. Oh, okay. That sounds good. Yeah, pick a day and then and I'm not sure. I'm not an expert, but this is a good chance for me to become an expert. Absolutely. I a bit of an expert in that I know I know a lot of a lot of those songs. I'd like to learn sure. more about them. I'd like to learn more about the people that wrote them. I'd like to learn more about their story. Um have on American television here a uh, uh, public public PBS it's called public broadcasting service I just saw a wonderful show about Jews and Jews and creating Broadway have you seen this show no but I will look for it it's it's on American television PBS if I can find a link I'll send it to you I found it fascinating well, I, you know, I, I mentioned a, a, about a week or two ago, West Side Story, one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I'll say a few things about West Side Story and then you can say. <clears throat> um, I fell in love with West Side Story because of Oscar Peterson. <laughs> yes. In, in, yes. 1960, in 1962 or 63, it is yes. a wonderful record. Um, and, and I listened to it and... Um, and I said, "Wow, wow, wow, wow!" And I said, "My my love for West Side Story grew out of the, out of Oscar Peterson, uh, also Canadian, one of the best musicians ever." Um, and, um, and and West Side Story, I don't know whether you know this, but it started out with a story about Jews in New York. Uh, before it became Puerto Ricans, and uh, Hispanics, and and the uh, and the. Uh, that's the I first think thing. I read that too. And I also read that the idea for it was simmering for 10 or 12 years. And it, it changed from one thing to the other, one, one thing to the other. And um, yeah, it, it, it's an interesting backstory. And the, and the people who were most involved, uh, Arthur Lawrence, who wrote the book, and uh, Stephen Sondheim, who wrote the lyrics, and Leonard Bernstein, who wrote the music. And Jerome, and Jerome Robinson, Robbins who yeah, put the whole Robinson. thing together, right? Yeah. Um, Fantastic people, huh? 
thank God for them. And, and well, it, I, I, another thing that I find fascinating about that is it doesn't all just come out at once. Sometimes it takes 15 years to even come up with the concept. You know, they didn't have the concept really in place until later on. So you got to just keep, keep hammering away, right? Keep going in the positive direction. So, uh, um, Paul, you, you have, um, I, I I won't lie, we're, we're going through one of the most difficult periods in the country's history, uh, maybe the most difficult. Um, we're at war. Uh, we're not sure what's going to happen. Um, and we're fighting hateful, uh, miserable um, butchers. And I'm not talking about the Palestinian people. I'm talking about the radical Islamists around the world. And um, when you do such an act of, of kindness for me, um, sitting here in Ramad Gan, um, people should know how good it is to have a friend like you in this world, Paul. That's all I can say. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to I'm going to continue with my daily mail and you'll give me a day a week that you come on and we'll talk about uh, Jewish giants of jazz. Let's learn more together and talk about it. And turn on well, the you, world. You're you're uh, going to make the, the list and we'll make a date for next week. Uh, like I said, I'm not an expert about I'm an expert at going boom, 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 boom. And knowing. Nor know, am I. But, but Paul, this is not. To, we're yeah. sharing love. We're not We're not sharing uh, information. Information. Yeah, you know what, else, what else I am not an expert on? I am not a Bible expert. I am not a Torah expert. I am not an expert on the history of your region. Um, I'm not an expert on the history of the I, of the conflict. You don't. Um, you don't have to be. You've been to Israel twice. You've seen us. And I've loved. I've learned to love. Well, I didn't have to learn. It was just there. I loved you and your people and the area, and it was. It was a mind blowing, life changing experience for me. When all of this crazy bad stuff is over and we find some kind of resolution i sure hope i can return there and give you a big hug and we can sing on stage together sing and play yeah. it, it but before then i'm going to come visit you okay when is that going to happen in april you will, you, will, you, will you host me for an event if i come hell yes okay yeah if you can do it well We'll do it anytime, yep. but I was just, I'm, uh, my mind automatically goes to Monday night, like tonight. Tonight, Sarah is going to join me and the whole big band. And wow. I would love, love for you to come and be a part of that spectacle. Okay, so we'll plan for a Monday. Yep, and uh, when you come, I'll have a big band arrangement of the Daily Mail for you. Wow. I, 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 I must, I, there's one musical thing. Um, like, it it could end on the ninth. Daily Mail. Couldn't it? Oh, it sure could. Well, it's jazz, baby. We just make yeah. our we make our decisions depending on which way the wind is blowing. I love it. I love it. Um and I love you. And Paul, um, please tell Sarah and the members of the band how grateful I am. And um I, 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 you are a great light in my life. Thank you, Thank sir. You. I love you. You know that. Um, this Facebook Live thing will be. Re I mean, we can just go onto your page and and re see it, see it again sometime, right? Yeah, and I'll put it on YouTube also. Okay, great. Well, um, we will be in touch, huh? And we'll uh, we'll make some things happen. Let's do that. I like you. I love idea. you, Paul Keller. Love you too, Mel. I love you. 
be safe and uh, God bless you. God bless Israel. God bless all good people over there. And we'll just hear a few more bars of this brilliant, beautiful gesture. And I'm going to thank everybody who's. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome, Mel. Bye, my dear friend. I just discovered that we can listen to it. Can you hear it? I can't hear it right now. Ah, so I'm hearing it. Okay. Love you. Goodbye, Mel. See you later. Thanks, Paul.